Hello and welcome to another build and paint video from Scale War Machines. This time we'll be looking at Tamiya's Shah B1 Bis, the German version. This is an excellent kit and we've got a real fondness for this particular release. It was built almost from the box, but there are a few enhancements which we'll look at now. The first stage was to drill out all the spots where the screw heads would go. Then using a punch and die set it was just a case of punching out small rivets using plastic card. These were then placed in the recesses. You can push down with the punch if it helps. The objective then is to make a small cut in the top as if it's the groove for a screw. Another improvement we undertook was to replace the plastic exhaust shields with aluminium ones. This was just fine metal from food packaging. The mud chutes were created by drilling through the top plastic as well and that just added a little bit more realism. You may have seen this in one of our past videos, but the next stage was to create a mud mixture using Tamiya Grey Putty. To this all sorts of mud and dirt and grit was added and then this was plastered all over the model. It was decided to do this before painting as it would add a realistic base. As you can see in these shots, some parts of the model were also coated in Mr. Surfacer by Gun Sanyo. If you want to find out more about this product, then check out our video. A final improvement was to use Archer Fine Transfer's surface detail resin casting numbers which are easy to apply and again feature in another video. For the Shah B1 Bis that was pretty much it and we were ready to move on to painting. The particular paint scheme we had in mind caught our eye because A it's in the box and one of the options but B it was olive drab which is an interesting scheme to paint this particular type of tank in. There's more pictures and information about the tank in question in the excellent track story book which also provided a colour plate as well as a reference photo. In order to paint this model we used life colour acrylic paints. These are excellent paints and they're especially good at brush painting. However, they can be a little bit difficult to get used to when it comes to airbrushing. The first thing to remember when using life colours is to dilute the paint using their proprietary thinner. That's the one in the green bottle. Mix it about 60-40 and then gently coat it on the model. We've done a dedicated film all about painting a tank from start to finish with nothing but life colours. So if you're interested in that, then check out our video. But let's press on with this tank and see how we got on. You may be wondering why there's no primer coat. It is possible to paint models like this without a primer coat, including with life colour. In this case that's exactly what happened, starting with our thinned life colour paint and our TRN1 airbrush, the paint was gently misted over the model. Try to go very slowly indeed and apply very thin coats, just let it land on the model. Now if it runs, don't do anything, leave it and move on to another part of the model. Problems can arise when you try to put too much paint on. As you can see, the rest of the model was painted and slowly but surely, thin layer of paint was built up. Very gradually it starts to become thicker and cover more of the plastic. But what was done next was to unleash the secret weapon that makes these paints way more usable, a hairdryer. In effect, Blasting the model with hot air causes the life colour paint to dry and to adhere really well. This then allows you to apply more and more coats and the paint will get thicker and thicker and tougher and tougher. Keep alternating between applying hot air and paint. You can therefore see that even without a primer, the paint begins to adhere well. That area where there were paint runs has dried out and is coated with subsequent coats of paint and nothing is visible. 
even the aluminium parts are getting coated nicely without the specialist primer. Once you've learned how to get the most out of these paints, you won't be disappointed. But regular use of a hairdryer will definitely help you. As you can see here, it's gone on really quite thickly, but with the hairdryer, it dries out nicely. As with all kits, it's just a case of trying to get any areas where the plastic still shines through. And for this build, the turret was done last. And here we are, ready for the next stage. The life colour set we used is a contrast and desaturation set. Basically, that's an easy three set with three paints in the box. And when Life Colour talks about contrast and desaturation, what they're talking about really is a technique called modulation. In effect, we just skipped to the last shade, which is called the flash shade. The goal here is to illuminate the centre of panels and any feature lines on the model with this lighter shade. Using the Iwata HPCH, various panels were picked out and lightened. Just work your way around the model, slowly but surely, picking out any details. Because we skipped one of the paints, we then lightened the flash shade with a dust shade to get even stronger contrasts. This in effect constituted the third stage of the modulation process. The technique is the same, and you just pick out the main features and highlights. You'll concentrate naturally on the top of the vehicle. Try to work along all the edges as well as they would catch the light. The objective here is to create a model that has a sort of three-dimensional characteristic. You'll see highlights and darker areas, and what will come next will accentuate that. Next, in the modulation process, what usually happens is using a brush, you pick out all the details in a very light green. For a bit of a difference, it was decided to do this with dry brushing. The green was mixed up using Humbrol H179 and some white oil paint. It's perfectly easy to mix oil and enamels in this way. Then using the dry brushing technique, it was a case of running the brush briskly over the surface details so that a deposit of paint was left over all the relief. If you want to find out more, make sure you see our film on dry brushing. The link is in the description. Patiently and without too much paint on the brush, you just work your way over all the model. You should see very subtly that the rivets and other raised details get a highlight effect thanks to the lighter paint. And here you can see that effect on the mud guards. Also the rivets and little access hatches at the bottom appear highlighted. Cleanup is easy with a little bit of white spirit on a soft bristle brush. Time now to pick out individual details. This is much more in the tradition of the modulation technique. And you work your way around the model and pick out various little components, panels, access hatches and so on, and pick them out in a much lighter shade. This creates a convincing 3D effect. Next up, some rust marks were applied over all the exhaust areas that would get hot and therefore corrode. This was done both with the brush and with the sponge chipping technique using the excellent Life Colour 
rust base color paint. This is a fantastic reference that we use on lots and lots of models. There you can start to see how the corrosion has been created on the exhaust component. We've also picked out the spare track links. And here you can see the model as it stands now. Time to seal everything and for this we use Johnson's Clear. Now this is an acrylic floor polish that's no longer available. Any kind of varnish or thick acrylic floor polish will really help just seal everything in and protect the paint for what's to come. This is especially important with any kind of acrylic paints like the Life Colours. For the decals, Tamiya always supplies excellent quality items and it's just a case of carefully cutting them out to avoid any kind of carrier film edges around the side of the markings. Just take your time and use a scalpel to cut the marking exactly at the delineation between the colour and the carrier film. To apply them it's just a case of using Microset and Microsol decal setting solution which really helps them to adhere to the surface. can dab away any excess water with a paper towel before sealing once again with clear. The clear coat will just help seal the markings and protect them. For the next stages of weathering it's decided to use oils. These are Abteilung 502 oils and some other references from Windsor and Newton and Rowney. It's just a case of using blacks and browns to create a dark wash. You can dilute it with mineral spirits or white spirit. The next stage is to moisten the whole model using thinners. Once that's done, just run the dark wash over all the model, particularly all the shadow areas, recesses and little channels. The idea is that the dark paint will settle in these areas and then dry. Because you've coated it with white spirit, it just removes the chance of any tide marks or unwelcome marks. This is a very common technique and a staple part of modelling and many modellers will be aware of this, but a dark wash will add a lot of shadows to the model. You can also do other coloured washes, here we're using a rust shade. At this stage it was time to paint the onboard tools and that was done using a couple of Vallejo paint references, again another acrylic paint range that is excellent. Some of them were shown worn down and some had bits of olive drab paint still on them. This was to indicate heavy wear. We used some Vallejo game colour washes in these references here, sepia, burnt umber and black, to create further washes but these time these were of course water based and it was interesting to try different techniques. A bit of that wash was applied around the Pioneer tools and that will be tidied up later. With the water-based washes thoroughly dry, we then reverted back to oil washes and this is more of a pin wash. A pin wash is where you concentrate solely on the details. The idea is that you get a bit of black or dark paint around items like rivets and in the channels. You can also flick the paint using the brush, just your thumb and a brush, and you get little spots and specks. It's often a case of reworking the oil paint and making sure you get a nice rich colour. Here you can see the rivets being picked out and there's more of that uh, stippling achieved by flicking the brush with a finger or, or a thumb. The model was gone over several times using this technique and it's best to let the paint dry in between and you can accelerate things with a hairdryer. What you can also do then is blend it using a thick flat brush and you get really pleasing vertical streaks, kind of like rain marks or grease stains and that can add to the realism of the model. Here you can see progress so far, with a kind of rich and textured and multi-layered effect on the sides of the tank. 
any cleanup is of course easy because for the most part these are solvent based effects. Give it a quick blast with a hairdryer and this is the next stage. You can see how much darker the model is. You can also see all those specks and spots of dirt which replicate oil and little specks of mud. Here's how the model looks so far. For the next stage we did a video on this but here's the whole process in detail. This is using Tamiya's excellent clear paints. They're semi-transparent, semi-translucent paints. You can apply different colours. First we use green and then the sort of orangey yellow. And it enables you to differentiate different components and create contrast in the overall olive drab finish. Here you can see just various items are picked out and given a slightly different sheen. You can also mask off individual panels and then cover them with a paint like in this case this is the green version. Remove the masking you get a subtle differentiation in the panel and that adds to the visual interest of the model. They're also great for streaking and we used a variety of references to create vertical streaks with an airbrush including their X19 smoke. Here you can see the airbrush being used all over the model to create streaks and shadow areas and wear and tear. It really is very subtle once applied, especially the smoke cover. You may even need to do a couple of passes to get an effect that's really visible. At this stage it was decided to cover the model in matte varnish using Vallejo matte varnish which is a staple of our modelling. We use this a lot and it's a great matte varnish. Here are a few more detail shots of the kind of textured and multi-layered weathering that's apparent so far on the model. Time now for some mud of course. A couple of sets were used from Life Colour, they're combination sets of pigments and paints. Their dust and mud sets came in very handy. And this was combined with their Tensacron Medium TSC 201. By selecting dust and mud shades and then thinning them down with the medium, you create your own Tensacron paint in effect. If you want to find out more about Tensacrons, we have done a video on this. We'll put a link in the description. What it does is create a very thin paint that acts as a kind of surface agent and you can see it being applied almost like a wash and when it dries it gives a very realistic dusty finish. Whilst it's still wet you can moisten a brush with medium and create rain streaks. You can also pool it. The more medium you put in the more subtle the effect will be. You can allow it to create kind of deposits of dust and little pools of dust that have been left due to rain or weather. It's obviously going to be particularly strong around the turret and with a bit more medium whilst it's still wet you can just rework what you've applied and create streaks and so on. But you mustn't let it dry because once it's dry the medium will have no effect. If you do want to find out more check out our video on using tensacrons. Now it's just a case of leaving it to dry. Chipping was next and for this enamels were used. The main reason we opted for enamels is that they're very easy to retouch and kind of adjust using thinners. So humbrol chocolate and black was mixed together to create a nice chipping colour. With a very fine brush these were just applied all over the model. This is just to represent chipped and oxidised metal. 
particularly prevalent around areas of heavy wear and usage. Just work gently and remember that because they're enamels they can always be removed if you don't like the effect. Some pigments were applied dry, this is their damp mud effect, and that was just applied using a flat brush. And then it was just toned down using a thicker flat brush. What's quite interesting then is to put little washes, either water or thin dust washes, within the pigments and they sort of adhere and mix with all the paint below and create really interesting dust and dirt effects like here. Once they dry the effect is really quite convincing. This was done all over the rest of the model and obviously concentrating on areas that would get really dirty. A few more rust washes were applied, again using the Tenscrom medium, just to apply rusty washes to areas that would corrode and get very oxidised. That was true also of the exhaust shrouds that got a Tenscrom wash, or filter in this case, this is more like a filter, to add to a kind of rusty heat damaged effect on those components. You can also use it to create streaks, as here, on the tow chain hooks. Finally, tensor crumbs are really good for oil deposits and oil stains, and various references from the tensor crumb sets were dabbed all over the model to create little pools and spots of mud and oily deposits. It was time to do the tracks, and a base coat was created using Trax Primer and a Vallejo Surface Primer, German Red Brown. This was sprayed all over the tracks using an airbrush. And once again, Tensagrom was mixed with some rust shades from the Rust and Dust Diorama set that Life Colour makes, and these were daubed all over the freshly painted tracks. We can't emphasise enough how fantastic their rust and dust diorama set is. It's something we use over and over again. Got really fantastic shades in it. You can give it a blast with a hairdryer and it was also given a blast with an airbrush just to unify everything. And here you can see what it looks like when it dries. For a bit of contrast and variety, oils were also used, applied afterwards. And that was just to create even more variation of rust and corrosion. Next up, some medium was applied and this was mixed again with various dust and mud references from the dust set. Just allow it to pool. And what you can then do is add pigments and drop pigments into it and that will all dry and create really convincing mud and dust effects. You can fix it all with a fixer. This is MIG Productions Pigment Fixer. And retouch it and add any final additions. Any loose pigment was removed. And we're pretty much ready to do the next stage. And this is stippling or speckling of mud. An AK Interactive Mud Effects set was used. And with the HPCH airbrush by Iwata turned right down, so pressure is virtually nothing, dark mud shades were stippled all over the tracks. The effect of stippling with an airbrush like this is to create really fine dots and specks. You can create bigger specks by using a toothbrush or something like that, and just rubbing your thumb along the bristles and flicking even bigger globules and spots of mud all over the tracks. MIG Productions oil, grease and stain mixture is really useful as well and that dries glossy so that was flicked over all the tracks as well.
And here you can see the effect. It's really messy work, but once dry, looks great. Just to create a coating of dust, some Humbrol H72 was sprayed over it. It's going to be blended and toned down later using thinners, but the advantage of this is that by spraying with the fine dust colour, when everything is toned down and cleaned up afterwards, everything blends together and it's really convincing. Some of the same shade was just sprayed over the model as well, and that too will be blended using thinners a bit later on. Time now to apply the tracks, but before we do that we just blend everything using a thick brush coated with thinners. On the sides of the tank it will create pleasing dust streaks in the finish. With the airbrush still toned down, it's time to stipple on some more tensochroms, mainly in the oil and smoke and burnt brown references. And this was to add even more fine dots and specks all over the model. Weathering is really about building up layer upon layer upon layer, and this is an example of that. By creating more and more layers of stipple paint, you give a rich texture to what would otherwise be just a uniform olive drab paint coat. This way you can see all the little details of paint and flecks of muck that really add to the realism of a vehicle that would be used in combat. You can repeat the process with the dust shades and that's exactly what happened. They were thinned down with some medium and a bit of water and again with the airbrush turned right down fine dots were sprayed all over the model. Here you can just see how subtle it is, they're just going on and when they dry they'll deposit a tiny little dust specks all over the paint finish. Work your way around the whole model and the effect will be uniform. And here it is. But we have to put on the tracks and that was the next stage. A little bit fiddly but the Tamiya parts are really well engineered and easy to attach. Try not to lose too many of the fine dirt deposits and pigments that you've attached to your tracks. And here are the turntable shots of the finished model. Hopefully the effect is realistic and you like all the different tonalities and shades of different components and the depth of all the weathering. Finally, using a bit more Tamiya clear smoke, some of the panel details were just picked out just to add a bit more shadow on top of all the dust and weathering, just for the final touch. Here you can see the result. Everything was sealed with a little bit of matte varnish and the model is complete. We hope you've enjoyed this video. It's certainly an excellent kit by Tamiya and it was really good fun to build and paint. It was also an interesting colour scheme that was a bit different and it was a real challenge to add interest to an olive drab paint coat. Hopefully these techniques will be useful on any allied tank finished in the same paint scheme. Don't forget to click subscribe to be notified whenever we release a video. And please give us a Facebook like or a follow if you appreciate what we're doing. We certainly appreciate everyone who follows the channel. And until the next time, goodbye.
subscribe for our latest videos.